Hello, everyone. This is the lecture for section 2.4, arc length of a curve and surface area. Uh, so this is another section where we're going to do be doing a lot of drawing. OK, uh, so if you got some graph paper, you know, break it out, have it next to you. OK, um, another sort of um, uh, thing I want to note is uh, we're getting into certain shapes and certain um, uh, expressions, certain calculus expressions, that we don't have the appropriate methods to evaluate them by hand. Um, what I mean is we, we're we getting into certain uh, sort of integrals, right, where we can't use u substitution yet. We don't have the tools that we need from calculus in order to compute them, okay? Um, at least not by hand. Does that make sense? But we do have, um, we do have a um, uh, our definite integral calculator uh, on Desmos, and that can compute the things for us. Does that make sense? We'll learn the techniques for some of these integrals much later in the course, uh, but in terms of just getting to compute them, uh, we're going to be using a lot of that Desmos um, uh, definite integral calculator that I've been messing with. Okay, so make sure you have that open. If you don't, that's okay. There's going to be a link uh, right next to this in the notes. Uh, just so you can have it open while we're doing the problems themselves, okay? All right, so uh, the first thing I wanna cover is uh, the idea of an arc length of a curve. So uh, the length of a segment of a function, okay? And then as a corollary, we're gonna use that idea, the arc length of a curve, to develop the idea of a surface area, okay? So uh, let me go ahead and get started. So let me scroll down a little bit. And let me start with that theory that I want to talk about first. So I'm going to first go ahead and slap down an X and a Y axis in not a highlighted color. I need it to be black ink. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to slap down an X axis and a Y axis just like this right here. There we go. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to do my F of X function in blue. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna make it pretty pronounced. I'm gonna make it do, uh, not that too much. There we go. Something like this, all right? Cool, and I want to do something. I wanna find the arc length from a point A to a point B, okay? <clears throat> and uh, just like before, what I'm gonna do, right, is I'm going to, divvy up my A to B into a partition, just like we were doing in the previous section. So here's our partition. We know this is going to be X zero. This is going to be our X sub N, right? We're going to div uh, divvy this up a little bit, right? Into our partition. And I want everybody to notice this, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and sort of draw in the dots that are above these partition points, okay? And there's going to be a good reason for it in a second. OK. Uh, we're going to start looking at distances. OK. So the first thing I want to sort of note, right, is uh, let's go ahead and take two points. OK. So let's go ahead and take uh, x1 and x2. Got it? OK. Then we know that those two points have an associated uh, y1, actually write it closer, an associated y1 and a y2 point on the y-axis, right? So we can go ahead and let's take these two points in particular, right? This point and this point. And let's say I just want to find this distance between those two points, right? Okay. Then if you guys recall from geometry from high school, right? The distance between these two points can be expressed this way. The x2 minus the x1 plus the y2 minus the y1. Uh, we grab both of those squared, take the square root of the addition of them, and that gets us our distance, right? Another way we're going to write it is this way. So basically, we're saying that we have a, I'm going to write it over here. This is a delta x1, and right here we have a delta y1. Okay, that there's a change in that amount. So that distance right here is given by that delta x1 and delta y1. Okay. Okay. 
So now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and uh, sort of take a note that let's take a random uh, xi minus 1 xi. Does that make sense? xi minus 1. X, I. So we're taking a rando partition here, right? And we're going to look at the distance between these two points, right? Okay. The same construction can be had, right? Uh, the D of I, the distance between those two points is going to be these two. It's going to be that, right? If we factor out an X, uh, a delta X, I squared, right? That pops out there and we get left with this all still under the square root, correct? And then if we want to pop the delta xi squared outside of the square root, right, then we have this left over. So essentially saying all three of these expressions that I have here on, uh, uh, on the page, uh, they're all equivalent. They're all equivalent statements, right? And they all are the distance between any two points in our partition. Okay, so uh, as you know, as if we reason this out, we can do this for any pair of points. So we can do it between for this interval right here. We can do it for this interval. We can do it for this interval, this interval, so on and so forth. We can do it for every single sub interval from our little partition, correct? Okay. And then the idea is we can grab all of those distances, right? Add them all up. And that gives us a pretty good approximation for the length of our curve from here to here, from A to B, right? So that's what we have down below. So if we just continue that uh, idea, right, we have this thing going on, that the arc length, a good approximation for our arc length, is the sum of these di's, the sum of the distances between the two points in our partition, right? Uh, which looks like this, which is what we just derived, if that makes sense, right? And then since it's n of them, right, we just put the summation, that means we're adding them all up. Got it? Now, just like we were doing in, in the previous section, if we grab that n, if we grab this n value that's right here, and uh, take that to infinity, aka um, if we grab our partitions, right, and we just make more partitions, so if we just start slicing up our partition, our A to B, more and more, if we make our little, um, if, our, if we make our uh, uh, delta X finer and finer and finer, right, uh, then that's the equivalent of us doing an integral, right? And that right there is the, uh, that right there is the, basically the end of our theory for that. Uh, notice how that the arc length now, right, is the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum of all of those smaller distances, right? And like I said, like what happened in, in previous sections, the second we start taking that limit, we end up doing the integral. Okay. Now, there is something here that needs to be clarified a little bit. Let me move up a little bit. Uh, there is something here that needs to be clarified. Okay. Um, this thing right here, the f prime of x squared, okay? And if you guys notice, right, that is what's standing in for our uh, delta yi divided by delta xi. So if you guys notice, that is a change in y over a change in x, correct? And uh, just keep in mind, right, that uh, what we're doing here is our n is dividing up our partitions finer and finer and finer. Does that make sense? So we're getting slopes, right, over partitions that are getting infinitely smaller and smaller and smaller, okay? AKA, we're taking the derivative. We're getting a derivative value here. And that's exactly what happens, that, that dy over dx, once we take the limit as n goes to infinity, uh, that uh, delta y over delta x turns into our derivative. So that's how that derivative pops up. Okay, so now that's the theory of the construction, right? How does that actually work? So we want to find the arc length, right, uh, of this graph uh, on the interval one half to two. 
Okay. So like I said, this is, we're getting into sections where uh, I do expect you guys to be able to at least construct the integral. Okay. Um, you may not be able to come uh, calculate it out using our techniques from class for now, but you are uh, going to be able to compute them using our calculator. Okay. And that's what I want you guys to do. Okay. So let's say we want to use this equation, uh, use this uh, arc length equation on a specific function. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say we want to take the arc length of this graph right here, uh, which is x cubed uh, over 6 plus uh, 1 over 2x over the interval 1 half to 2. So that means I want this arc length right here from here to here, way over there. So I want to find how long this strip is right here how long this strip right here is, okay? All right, so uh, we just go ahead and plug in everything that we need to uh, into our formula that's above it for the arc length, right? So uh, for the arc length, I need the derivative, so I'm gonna need to do f prime of x, right? Uh, and I'm gonna rewrite it just so that I can do the derivative so I can make it clear for everybody else. It's gonna be 1 sixth x cubed plus one half x to the negative one. I need the derivative of that, right? So if I take the derivative of that, okay? If I take the derivative of that, it is going to be uh, one sixth, the derivative of x cubed is three x squared, plus one half, the derivative of x to the negative one is gonna be negative one x to the negative two. So if we clean this up nice, uh, we should get, uh, one half x squared minus one half x uh, to the negative two. All right, so we have our derivative now. This is all we needed for the integral. So uh, if we want to find the integral from a to b, so that's what it's going to be. So integral from one half to two of the square root. I'm going to I'm not going to put the top on it yet, just so I make it clear. It's going to be 1 plus uh, the derivative squared, so 1 half x squared minus 1 half x to the negative 2 squared, all that under a square root, dx. Okay. Now, you can expand this, and it's going to look really nasty. OK, and unfortunately, like I said at the beginning of the lecture just now, uh, there are going to be some expressions that we will not be able to solve. This is going to be one of them. OK, whenever you get to an expression, an integral expression that you can't solve, you should be at least able to set up the integral to get you the result that you need. So we're looking for an arc length here. Right. So we can get the answer for this. Uh, just using our Desmos calculator. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and sort of do a double screen here again. I'm going to put, uh-oh. I know you guys probably are scared when I say that. Uh oh So I'm going to go ahead and stick the integrand right in. So it's going to be the square root, right? I'm going to do 1 plus, uh, and if I if I clean this up a little bit, it's going to be 1 half, I'm going to do x squared, right, minus 1 half uh, x to the negative 2, right, and then squared. Okay. Now, it does say undefined here, right, but we need it from uh, 1 half to 2. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the a, move it to 1 half. So that's going to be 0.5. Come on, 0.5, and then the 2. So this is going to be all the way back to 2. There we go. So the answer to this is 2.0625. Okay. And that's it. You computed the arc length, at least for what we have. Okay. Um, that's all I really want you to do for these. OK, uh, I believe after this, yep, you guys have your very first quick checks. OK, uh, like I said, whoa. 
like I said, uh, for some of these, you won't be able to compute them. We won't have the, uh, the techniques or the strategies for them yet. We're going to learn all of those in chapter three, okay, in the next section. For now, we're just going to concentrate on how to construct it, which is usually the much harder thing to do. Okay, and then we'll ease into the techniques to solve them uh, later on in the course. Like I said, in chapter three is when we start learning the very first techniques for these. Okay. So go ahead, uh, do your uh, quick check. Make sure you submit it. Make sure you're as clear as possible as to what's being computed. Okay. Make sure you show as much of your work as possible. Okay. All right. So moving on, there is a... Uh, <clears throat> there is an equivalent statement for an arc length, just in case we need to go uh, along the y-axis instead of the x-axis, okay? And the equation, if you, as you guys can tell, it doesn't change too much, okay? We just have a, um, our equation define gy this time, right? And that's it. <clears throat> All right, so now, the area for the surface of revolution, okay? Um, this is going to be, there's a, there's a little bit of a calculus that I'm sort of gonna gloss over. Um, I will state it. Um, it's not an, it's not a, it is sort of crucial to the argument for the construction, um, but that is it. We don't need to memorize it or we don't need to remember it as we go down to the um, uh, as we go down to the uh, statement for finding the area for the surface of revolution. OK, if that makes any sense. Uh, like I said, I'll explain it thoroughly, as I usually do. Right. Um, just for us to build the construction. Right. But after that, it's it really don't need it. OK, so area for the surface of revolution. So the first thing I want to do is I want to cover uh, the idea of the surface area of a cylinder. And that's this thing right here, 2 pi r. So if I had a cylinder, so I'm going to draw one here, right? So here's my cylinder, picture a Coke can, right? Picture a, a soda can, right? It's got a radius r, right? And it's got a height. OK, and I want the surface area. I want the amount of sort of uh, I want the aluminum can, the amount of aluminum can I'm going to need to construct my soda can. OK, and if you sort of unravel it right, if you take a look, uh, the unraveling is just going to be one big, huge rectangle. Right. That's defined by my height. Right. And this length right here from here. To here right, is going to be given by this circumference up here, right? So then what we have here is this, 2 pi r, right? Which means that the area for this thing, right, the area for this is going to be 2 pi r times h. That is the surface area of the can itself. That's how we get this thing right here, okay? All right, so now, uh, did I? Okay, so this is the uh, construction for the surface area, right, of a cylinder. Basically, the aluminum can around, right? How much material do I need to make that, all right? So now I'm going to erase this. This is the thing that we needed from geometry. Now let's get into the real good calculus stuff, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do Okay, is as usual, I want to slap down an X and a Y axis. Here's my X, or I'm sorry, my Y axis. I'm going to do an X axis right next to it, right there. Okay, and th there's a purpose for why I'm doing a double, double ended thing there. Okay, um, we're going to go ahead and do F of X being continuous function. So let's go ahead and slap down an F of X. I'm going to make it nice and curvy so that it doesn't look straight. Okay, and let's say I want from A to B, okay? So I want this shape right here. I'm gonna do it in blue, okay? Uh, I'm gonna cordon those off really quick, right? And I'm gonna do an exactly the same function down here, sort of, hopefully. 
There we go. Ah, that's almost that's almost pretty close, actually. Yeah. If anything, you guys should be entertained by my uh, sound effects here. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this shape. Okay. And it's going to go like this. It's going to... There. And then this... I'm going to connect here. I'm going to make this one go to the back like that. There we go. Okay. And let me actually make this connect all the way down to make it look like the shape that I want. There we go. Okay, so hopefully you guys see the shape that's sort of been produced there, right? Uh, I'm grabbing my f of x function. Let me label my f of x function, f of x. So I'm labeling my f of x function. I'm grabbing that f of x function, and I'm rotating it about the x-axis. So I'm grabbing my f of x and going like this. It's going this way, like this. Okay. And that's the shape that's going to be created. Okay. So now the question becomes, how do I find the surface area of said shape? How do I find uh, sort of the, the outside area, the area of the container that's been made when I do this, when I revolve it around the x-axis? Okay. We will need the idea of an arc length. Okay. We will need the idea of an arc length. So just keep that in the back of your mind for now, all right? So let's go, let me go ahead and start with my construction, just like I did from before, from the previous sections, right? I can grab my A to B and I can divvy up, uh, let me divvy up a little smaller, divvy up my A to B into smaller subintervals using my partitions, right? Okay. And I'm going to look at, in particular, one specific xi minus 1 xi uh, strip. There's going to be one particular subinterval that I'm going to be looking at. OK? <clears throat> OK. So we need sort of the idea here is we're going to get a bunch of uh, small little, uh, basically very, very, very skinny, very, very, very skinny soda cans. Does that make sense? So we need, hopefully you guys see what the soda cans look like here. This is a soda can and here's the other end, right? So we need this soda can. We need this soda can, this one in orange, right? Now, Unfortunately, we can't find the um, the surface area of such an oblong sort of. If you if you take a look at it, right, the radius for this outside portion right here, right, is bigger than the radius for this inside portion, right. So unfortunately, we don't have a way of figuring that out. Okay, so here's the bit that I need to gloss over uh, for. Uh, for the purposes of our construction, okay? We need that arc length sort of in general, right? Um, and the way that we find that arc length, right? Uh, if you go back to um, uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus, sorry, not the fundamental, uh, the mean value theorem for calculus. If we want the integral between those two points, right? There's got to be another point in between. Whoa. There's got to be another point in between, right? And that one we're going to call our xi star, OK? That's what's going to be our xi star, OK? Uh, if, we want in, if we want the integral between those two points, xi minus 1 and xi, then by the mean value theorem, there's got to exist another point in between that has the same integral. That is the end of uh, the outside. So that's the bit I'm glossing over here, OK? So now, how do we use this? So it turns out now we can go ahead and make this rectangle. 
Notice it's not the rectangle. I'm going to go down here for the same height. Notice it's not the same rectangle that was there before, right? It, it, it's not a trapezoidal shape in this case. Uh, it's straight. It's a straight, straight cylinder. Let me actually draw that a little better. It's a straight, straight cylinder. Completely sort of a horizontal cylinder. Hopefully that makes sense if you guys can see that. Right. OK, so the idea is if I can find the surface area of this one cylinder, right, and do it for every single one of my partitions and then grab all of those surface areas and add them up, I have a pretty good uh, I have a pretty good um, uh, approximation for my surface area just using uh, cylinders, right, Coke cans essentially. Very, very tiny, very short Coke cans, right? So that's exactly what we're doing here. So uh, the idea here is this. This length from here to here, right? That is our di, which is given by our square root of 1 plus f of x prime squared. That is our as we've been saying, oh, times dx, times a delta x, right? Sorry, dx, dx, dx. Uh, that is what we're calling our uh, arc length, right? That is what we're calling our arc length. And the thing that's missing now, right, is we need this height right here, whatever this is, right? And that is given by uh, f of x i. Right. So uh, if we go back and use this equation, we go back and use this equation right here um, for our surface area, right? Then we can see that we have the following. It's going to be 2 pi times our radius, which is the f of xi, times the di's, right? Which is given by the arc length formula the arc length formulation, okay? Hopefully you guys see that, okay? And like we were doing before, uh, we're grabbing our partitions and making them infinitely smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. The second we do that, we take an integral. We're taking an integral, okay? So let's scroll down. Let me show you the sort of the formulation for each one now, okay? Uh, suppose that you have f of x, a non-negative smooth function over a, b, okay? Then the integral for the surface area is given by this thing. Notice how the construction is no different from what we have above, that the f of x is still right here, right? And then this right here looks to be, right, the uh, arc length formula, which is this thing right here. OK, and just like uh, in our previous formulations, right, um, the first one, the very first one, this one, uh, is if I revolve my shape around the x-axis, OK? Uh, and then the one below it is the same idea, revolving my shape around the y-axis. That is it, OK? So now, how do we use these? It's essentially the same way that we've been doing it from before, right? We just sort of compute the things that we need, plug it into our equation, and we're off to the races. Okay, so let me actually put let me put that one there just so we have a, a reference here. Okay. So let's say we wanted to find the surface area generated by that equation, okay, from negative one to one about the x-axis. So we know that we need this strip right here. Basically, this is the area. This is the thing that's going to be revolved around. So this is going to be our shape, really. It's going to be all of this, right? It's going to be all of this. And I'm going to try to draw it 3D right now in a second, but I just want to show you guys the... So imagine grabbing that thing, right, and revolving it around the x-axis. So that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to uh, go ahead and put down an x and a y axis wrong color.
Uh, there's my y-axis, shape, that thing. Here's my x-axis. Bam. Okay. And I want to bring this in a little bit. There we go. Okay. So I want to go ahead and draw this as best as possible. So I'm going to do one, two, one, two, minus one, minus two, one, two. And I'm going to try to draw this thing, right? So we know that this shape, and I'm going to keep it in purple, actually, it's going to look like this, right? Oh, man. There we go. Okay. So if we revolve this around the x-axis, right, you guys hopefully can see, and there's, there we go. This is essentially a circle, right? This is a, our function f of x is the top end of a circle. Okay. It is the top end of a circle. So if we revolve this around the x-axis, what we have, right, is a sphere. It's a ball. It is a ball. Okay. And what we're looking for is the surface area generated by that function, square root of four minus x squared from negative one to one. So we can see sort of, now I'm going to go ahead and draw this in, uh, our shape. Well, you guys see the shape that's showing up now. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and connect these two. Connect these two. I'm gonna do dotted for the back end. There we go. And then hopefully you guys see the shape really. It's gonna be this thing right here. There we are. So there we go. There we go. Filled in right there. So sort of imagine a ball, right? With sort of like the two ends sort of lopped off. That's it. Okay, so now the question is uh how uh how do we find the surface area for this thing, right? It's as, essentially as simple as plugging that stuff in right there. So uh, let's go ahead and get started for this one. I need uh, to take the derivative of this. So if, if f of x is that thing, then the derivative, I'm going to rewrite it really quick. So it's going to be 4 minus x squared to the 1 half. I need the derivative of that, right? So the derivative of this is going to be 1 half 4 minus x squared, the negative 1 half, times the inside, 2x, because we need to use chain rule, right? So if you do this all appropriately, you should get x over the square root of 4 minus x. OK? That's all we needed. We're off to the races at this point. So integral. And we need it from negative 1 to 1 because of the negative 1 to 1 here, right? Uh, it's going to be 2 pi times g of y. Well, in this case, it's going to be f of x, right? So f of x, so square root 4 minus x squared times the arc length uh, term from the very end. So it's going to be 1 plus x over square root 4 minus x squared squared. OK. And just to finalize it, dx. OK. So notice how this, uh, th this is it. This is our setup. OK. So long as we can compute this, we have our arc length. OK. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So equal to integral from negative 1 to 1, 2x, I'm going to put this here, uh, 4 minus x squared times, and if you resolve this, the thing inside the square root, if you resolve that far enough, you're going to get something that looks like this, uh, 4 over 4 minus x squared. 
Okay, dx. So, like I said, this is um, uh, there might be some expressions in this section that we won't be able to do. This is actually one that we will be able to do, and I hopefully hopefully you guys see this already. Okay, uh, this is going to be equal to negative one to one. We haven't done the integral yet, right? And I did x. Look at me go. This is supposed to be pi. Uh, 2 pi, 4 minus x squared down here, and it's under a square root. That's going to cancel this. So I'm going to just get left with square root of 4 dx. That is all equal to the integral from negative 1 to 1 of uh, 4 pi dx, which is equal to 4 pi x evaluated from negative 1 to 1. And if you do it right, 8 pi. Okay. Now, like I said, some of these expressions you won't be able to compute using, you know, the calculus things that we know for now, like I did right here, right? But you should be able to still compute a value for that integral. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to grab my f of x. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and delete all of that. And I'm going to go ahead and put in my integrand, this thing right here. Okay, so uh, this is one of the reasons why I like, there you go, I like um, Desmos because uh, it'll show you exactly what you're putting in, and it's going to look exactly like uh, the thing that you need, if that makes sense. Uh, 1 plus, I'm going to put x divided by... Uh, square root of 4 minus x squared, and then squared. So hopefully that makes sense. I, I'm, I'm actually plugging in the thing that I need evaluated, right? You guys see that, right? 4 minus x times all of that mess squared. Right now, and I need this from negative one to one, so I'm going to move this to negative one to one. Twenty five point one three two seven, and it turns out, right, if you actually put this in your calculator, if you do eight pi, that is the twenty five point one three seven uh, one three two seven. Okay. That is it. So hopefully you guys get the idea for how to construct stuff. Again, when you guys do your quick checks, uh, be as meticulous as possible with your uh, functions themselves, with your drawings. Make sure you include a drawing of what you're looking at, right? Um, and depending on uh, the function themselves, you might be able to compute, you might not. No matter what, you should be able to plug it into our calculator and get a numerical value for it. OK, make sure that everything's going OK. Uh, double check with your uh, classmates, with your group mates as well. Um, yeah, be meticulous. Be uh, uh, be precise. Don't get sloppy. OK. Uh, at this point, the next section here is quick checks. There's going to be uh, two of them here. OK, uh, and for both of these, it's going to be uh, functions that, again, you won't be able to compute using the calculus that you know for now. You will be able to at least get a numerical value for the integral. So I expect at least that much, OK? And make sure that you draw a, a nice rough sketch. Provide the nice rough sketch. Uh, I'm trying to get you guys used to drawing these shapes out. It's going to uh, help you out immensely to organize your thoughts, um, to make sure you're not sort of combining things you're not supposed to, OK? And after that, I think it's lecture questions. Yep. OK. Uh, besides that, um, if there are any questions, uh, come visit me during my office hours or our Friday hours. Um, I've had a couple people drop in, which is great. OK. So uh, if you need some extra help on Fridays, stop by. OK. Besides that, for this section, I am done. Happy studying.